Hey everyone, this is Art, and today we are talking about Deno. Or is it Dino? Not really sure how you say that. Deno. Anyways, Deno is the new JavaScript hotness, kind of comparable to what most people are familiar with as Node.js. And if it lives up to all of its hype, it's going to be really awesome. So what is Deno? If you're familiar with Node.js, you're going to feel right at home writing apps in Deno. There's a couple of nuances and things that make it different, but at its core, it's a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript. Let's dig into a couple of examples. Okay, here we are in the, the sample app directory I have linked on my personal GitHub account, which you can find the link on your screen. And you can see some information here in the README for my episode one branch on Deno. And we've got three samples to look at here today. We're going to start with the Hello World app, which the contents of our JavaScript, or excuse me, our TypeScript file are pretty much exactly the same as you would have in a Hello World app in Node.js. And if I enter my samples directory from my console and simply run deno run hello world, we can see that it spits back at me via the console log hello world. So right off the bat, if you're a Node.js developer, again, you're going to feel pretty comfortable jumping right into deno. However, I have a second example where it's going to dig a bit more into some of the nuances that make Deno different than Node.js. And we can start simply on line one by looking at the import statement. So in Node.js, we have to use the require syntax unless you have some sort of transpiler built into your workflow that would allow you to use ES modules in your code. That comes out of the box in Deno, which is really pretty exciting on top of being able to write TypeScript out of the box as well. You can see here on line one, we are importing a file directly via a URL because Deno does not have the concept of a, central, a centralized repository of packages like Node.js has in NPM. Just to continue on with the example, and we'll come back and talk about some more of the differences uh, here in a minute, we'll see that we're going to spin up a, a server on port uh, 8000 of my local host. Uh, and this is simply going to uh, load the contents of a website and spit them back out in my console. Nothing really all that exciting here. But if we run deno run server ts we're going to catch our very first security flag in deno and deno bills itself as a secure runtime for typescript and javascript so this is very very important and i want everybody listening to take a close look at what deno is telling us uncaught permission denied network access to localhost port 8000, run again with the allow net flag. So let's stop for a second and talk about why security is an important concept to understand in Deno. For years, Node.js developers have lamented the fact that there are no built-in security controls to Node.js. Your apps can arbitrarily access any site on the internet. There's no way to whitelist what directories your app can write to or read from. And Node.js apps can arbitrarily access environmental variables whenever they want to during the runtime of an application. Deno says, no, we're not going to allow any of that by default. If you want your app to access the internet, to access the file system, to access environmental variables, you have to explicitly declare those permissions when the application starts. Coming back to our app, the first thing we're going to want to do is to check with Deno and this allow net flag. So I couldn't run the application before without granting access to the network. So if we simply come back and add 
allow nets and run the application, we'll see it'll run just fine. In fact, if I click through to the application, we'll see my localhost port 8000 does in fact come up. And if I went as far as to add a get request to my URL, let's say I refer, let's do my own website, www.akawebdesign.com. What we'll see is that it spits back the contents of my website. The application works as intended. But unfortunately, we've stumbled into what will become a very common security pattern for many Deno developers. And that's that we blindly chose to allow net to our application without being very specific about which sites on the internet we actually want to grant access to. In most cases, we don't want our application accessing every far corner of the internet. We will probably want to limit which domains or IPs it can access. To do that, we very simply add additional specifications to the allow net flag. And in our case, we may want to allow it to do localhost 8000 so the application can run, but also my website, www.akawebdesign.com. And so now that that application is running again, I can refresh the page. Well, see, there's no change to the behavior because we've allowed my application to access AKA Web Design. But what happens if we switch that back to Google? Denna will now prevent our application from accessing Google because it is not explicitly whitelisted in our application permissions. So is Deno actually a secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript? To their credit, the Deno developers have done a great job of locking down things like network access and file system access by default, which Node.js clearly didn't have. But on the other hand, most people are not security experts, and the advice that the default Deno error messages give you are just to turn on flags like allow net or allow read without instructing the developers to be very specific in qualifying what parts of the internet or what parts of the file system you want the application to access. Deno is making it too easy to circumvent its built-in security controls by giving people poor advice. To be perfectly honest, I feel like Deno is doing the developer community a great disservice by going to great lengths and avoiding the use of some sort of manifest file like package.json, which is the natural place to put whitelisted information for things like which domains your application could access or what folders on the file system you want your application to access. Even websites and web applications have a defined content security policy, things that Deno simply doesn't have. Furthermore, Deno avoids the use of a centralized registry for modules, which on the one hand is nice because it allows you to access modules from anywhere on the internet, but on the flip side, if there is a known security issue in a given module, central registries like NPM have the power to warn developers that they're using an outdated or vulnerable version of some package, as well as having the ability to simply pull a package down. Deno doesn't allow that. So is Deno really that secure? And should you be using it in your next project? Here's my hot take. I think the developers of Deno have done a great job making security a first class citizen and having a really secure posture by default in their runtime. But unfortunately, their own error messages, their documentation, and the vast majority of content you're going to see online undoes that default security posture by telling you to blindly use flags like allow net or allow read without qualifying what specific things you plan to whitelist. Should you be using it in your next project? You should definitely kick the tires. It's something that I plan to continue experimenting with. I think it's a really cool tool. I love how it lets us use TypeScript out of the box. 
certainly doesn't solve everything that I wish a Node.js compatible runtime would allow me to do. But I hope you'll give Deno a try. Leave me your thoughts in the comments below, and let's continue this conversation. Keep an eye on Deno as it progresses throughout the rest of 2020 and beyond, and we'll see if any of these features make their way back into Node.js. Thanks again for watching. I had a fun time, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.